<laughs> I love it. What a joy to be here together experiencing the birth of Jesus this morning. The greatest story ever told. Amen. Isn't that the truth? And you know, yesterday as I watched the dress rehearsal, and this morning as I watched, it reminded me of growing up, and the very first time I was in a play was at my grandma and grandpa's house with my two sisters and all of my cousins participating in the same exact story that we just experienced this morning. But it wasn't quite as put together as this morning. I mean, let me guarantee you. It was my grandpa's robe. It was the tablecloth and chairs and pillows and uh, grandma's gold fake jewelry, all the basement finds for the costumes. But for me, when I remembered that and I look back at that time, it didn't matter what kind of role I had, whether I was the little sheep. And by the way, they are getting fruit snacks over here. That was brilliant <laughs> on their break. Or if I was Joseph, or I don't think I was ever baby Jesus. I was never that good. But it didn't matter because I was part of the family Christmas play. And it meant something. And my older sister, she was always the one directing us, giving us the cues. And after hours of, of preparation, of practice, we would emerge from out of the basement. And we'd get our uncles and our aunts up from their naps or turn off the football game or we'd uh, say pause on the table games and we'd all head to the basements and not a whole lot unlike today with camcorders big old things I remember cameras galore our parents our grandparents our aunts and uncles they were ready to see the story unfold and boy, my, my heart was just excited as I was sharing that uh, memory yesterday for sure. And what's interesting is I thought about it is that my parents and my aunts and uncles and my grandparents were on the edge of their seats, a lot like you were today, leaning forward to hear the greatest story ever told again. And it's the story that's worth repeating for the ages, isn't it? It's a story simple enough for the youngest to share in drama and complex enough, layers of awesome is how I would say it, to keep theologians busy studying and digging deeper. It's the story of Jesus coming to earth. Now in the Bay Family Christmas uh, production, if I could say it that way, I can assure you there were no Oscars. No nominations, no best acting. <laughs> uh, now today, that might be a little different. You know, I'm, I'm not minimizing our efforts today. There are future stars on the stage for sure. But our parents, they loved it because their kids, their offspring, were participating in that story that was passed down. And my parents, they loved seeing me and my sisters perform. Similar to the way... Jessica and I have enjoyed for years watching Reagan and Logan participate, and this was the first year that both of my kids were not, were too old to participate. What's happening? You guys are growing up too fast. And we're here today enjoying that morning of ministry by our kids at the Gateway Church, and the reason is because we love our kids. We love our kids, and we, want, we love to watch them do, to do whatever we love to watch kids do. And for Jessica and me, we have enjoyed countless games, soccer and baseball and basketball and volleyball and piano and drum recitals and spelling bees and science projects. The list could go on and on. The idea is to be with our kids, seeing their gifts and their talents displayed. It's awesome. We love being with our kids. And I didn't really understand this until I actually had kids that were participating and there are things that parents do and love that to an outsider, they may question your sanity. In other words, they may say, like, you know, you're watching this game and you're all into it. What's going on with that? Or you may be at a band concert, like even this week, the sixth graders, now they're better than the fifth graders, Logan, but the sixth grade band concert, it was no Trans-Siberian Orchestra, I can assure you, but we loved it and we're videoing and we're posting it online because our kids are in it. But I'll tell you, the thing that takes the cake for me 
And Jessica and I, I look back at this in amazement. We were both volleyball players in high school, Jessica and I were. And so when Reagan decided to play volleyball, we thought this is going to be incredible. And now to an outsider, sixth grade volleyball is painful to watch. <laughs> About one in every ten serves go over the net. Maybe you've been there. Maybe you've seen it. it in volleyball, it's supposed to be bump, set, and then what? Spike. We didn't see that the whole season. I'm just saying. <laughs> in Reagan, we were there on the edge of our seats. We were into it. We were shouting. Uh, my heart rate would get all intense because we loved you. And we loved watching our daughter play volleyball. I was thinking about it. The same is true with our Heavenly Father. Did you, knew, did you realize that 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 describes us, if we give our heart to the Lord, as children of God? That we are His children? That God is pleased with us? He is on the edge of His seat watching us? He's interested in us? more than we could ever know our every move. God watches over our day to day, and the reason why is the same reason why I love to watch my kids do. It's because he loves us. He even counts the number of hairs on our head. Now, to me, that seems obsessive and kind of weird, but it's the truth. That's what the Bible says. And then to top it all off, he loved us so much that he sent his one and only son to be with us. Everyone say, with us. <laughs> and in the play that we just enjoyed, the final line said this, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means, and then all the kids said together, God with us. That's straight from Scripture, Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. And the fact is, is that God, He desires to be with us. For us to be in His presence. And as we experience His presence, it's really what makes the difference in our lives. It's the truth. The truth of the Christmas story, Emmanuel, God with us, it's what sustains us. It's what frees us. It's what gives us real hope. It's what protects us. And I was thinking even this year with uh, the terrorism, even in the United States and the hurt and the pain in a lot of families and just different things, there's a protection that comes with Emmanuel, God with us. It provides peace in our troubled world. God with us. And I was thinking it even men's relationships, even men's broken hearts. Day to day, moment by moment, God with us. And just this week, as I was reflecting, there was a God moment like that in my life. And uh, I don't know about you and what your family looks like, but even after 19 years of being married, sometimes Jessica and I, we hit some rough spots. And uh, we might be unique, I'm not sure, but my guess is that you probably do as well. It's not as bad as it used to be. 18 years ago, I had remote controls thrown at me, believe it or not. <laughs> not anymore, though. <laughs> that hasn't happened in a long time. But this particular week, I'm sorry to say, <laughs> I'm in trouble. Oh, boy. <laughs> Reagan's going, no more. <laughs> but this particular week, it was one of those rough patches in the Vey home, and I don't think Reagan and Logan even really got it or saw it too much, but we were upset at each other. We were hurt. We were, there was some arguing going on. But Friday afternoon, I want to say, God met us in our home. He softened our hearts. And I will say this, uh, in the marriage series, Love and Respect, it talks about the, the one that thinks they're most mature should apologize first and unfortunately this week that wasn't me it was Jessica that said she said Ben I don't want to keep on fighting anymore and what was amazing church is that the God of the universe met us right there in our home at our time of need and looking back the truth of Emmanuel in our lives in our marriage has sustained us we would have given up a long time ago. We would have thrown in the towel. 
but it's Emmanuel, God with us, that frees us from sin. It frees us from addiction and strongholds. Emmanuel, God with us, gives us hope. Jesus is called the Prince of Peace for a reason, because he brings peace into our lives. God's presence is what makes the difference. And for the next couple weeks, I just want to challenge you to be back with us as we continue through the season. We want to invite you to experience the power, the reality of Emmanuel, of the presence of God. And we're going to unpack that over the next two weeks. And I want to, but this morning, I want to pray for us before we go. Because I believe there's something special that happens when kids are involved. Hearts are softened. Kids can do that. Isn't that the truth? And as our hearts have been softened this morning and we've seen the Christmas story unfold, I believe that God has been speaking. We've been praying and asking God to minister to each of our hearts today. And so I'm going to pray and then I want to ask just two quick things. Uh, the first thing I'll, we'll talk about is if you are here today and you need Emmanuel to come into your life, and to save you, we're going to give you that opportunity. The second is for whatever you may be facing, what is the need in your life where you desire that relationship, that Emmanuel God with us? But let's pray and set our hearts before the Lord. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this morning. We thank you, God, for the songs. We thank you for the children and for all the hard work that went in to making this morning a success. But Lord, we bring it to this moment of decision, a moment of surrender. And God, we pray that you'd be working overtime on our behalf. Speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. With your head bowed and eyes closed, no one looking around this morning. I'm just curious how many this morning would say, you know, Pastor, um, this story is a great reminder. I have given my heart to Jesus. Just slip up your hand if that's you. If you've given your heart to the Lord at some point in your life. Yeah, hands going up all over. You bet. You can put your hands down. If you're here this morning and you didn't were unable to raise your hand, or maybe you're saying, boy, I maybe have made a decision in the past, but it's been a long time since I've really lived in, live in with that reality of Emmanuel, God with us, and you're ready to receive the Lord. If you're here this morning and God is softening your heart and you're ready to say yes to Jesus, I want you to slip up your hand right where you are and I want to pray with you. We've been praying for you that God would be speaking to you. Don't let this season come and go without a relationship with this Jesus. Is there anyone at all? On my right, your left, just slip up your hand. I want to pray with you. It won't embarrass you. How about in the middle section? Anyone at all? Thank you. In the back, on the left, over here, on my left, your right. Anyone else? There's one young lady that's ready to surrender. Let's pray and ask God to meet her this morning. Jesus, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would work in this young lady's life. Lord, as she surrenders to you, she, she asks for help. Lord, that you would step in and you would save her, you would take away her sins like you promised to do. But Lord, then you would walk with her and you would, you would be with her. God, move in a powerful way. We thank you for the truth of your word, the truth of this story. And God, we give you the praise and glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now with your head bowed and continue eyes closed, I want to ask the question, about your awareness of God with us. You know, Colossians 1.27 says that Christ in us is the hope of glory. That Emmanuel, that God would walk with us. And certainly, if you've been in the church, you understand that God never leaves us, never forsakes us. And there's, there's application for every single one of us, for every moment of the day. Not one breath that we take is really without the help of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the one that makes it happen. But this morning, I wanted you to think about your life. And where is the need? Can you think of an area of your life where you need 
the Lord in a specific way. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's a financial need. Maybe it's a job that is needed. Maybe it's a physical need. And you are just declaring, man, I need the presence of God in my life in a special way this season. Above and beyond the norm. Who would respond and just lift up your hand today? I want to pray with you. Yeah. Who else saying, man, I need the Lord today in this situation, whatever it is. And the beautiful thing is that as hands are going up all across this place, there may be someone here struggling with addiction, or there may be someone struggling with a relationship ready to give up, or there may be someone that has a physical need that needs a miracle. God is aware of every single one of those things. And his promise in his word is that he'll never leave us, he'll never forsake us. And so this morning, as we close, let's call out to our Heavenly Father. Let's ask him to be with us. Ask him to help us to be mindful of that. And I believe that God, he will indeed do that. He will help us. Let's stand as we close in prayer. Lord, I pray this morning for every single one that's here, God, that you would help us experience Emmanuel. Lord, we would understand that your word is clear, that you never leave us, you never forsake us. And God, that you help us in our need. And so for those especially that raise their hands, identifying areas of our lives that we need your presence. We welcome you into our lives. Help us to walk with you and talk with you. Help us not to check in and out, but Lord, that we would be with you and be mindful of your presence in our lives. Lord, go with us now as we leave, and we will give you the praise, we'll give you all the glory, and like I often pray, that you go before us, behind us, and all around us. We pray it in Jesus' wonderful and awesome name. Amen. Amen. We love you. Thank you for being here this morning. Go in the grace of God. If you need prayer for anything, we would love to pray with you, and we'll stick around up front. Otherwise, go in the grace of God.